Unai Emery led Aston Villa to a massive win against Man City, leapfrogged them in the table and are now in a title race. Arsenal topped the table, led by Mikel Arteta, after clawing themselves to the top with a good recent run. And the two face off this weekend in what is feeling like a big game in the title race. What's more, Arsenal legend Tony Adams, who's got a statue outside the ground, said that despite loving the work that Mikel Arteta has done with this Arsenal team, perhaps last season's team, if they were led by Unai Emery, would have got over the line. It's all making for a great conversation that I want to have in this video right now. What if Unai Emery had this current Arsenal group? I want to look at how they set up tactically, which players would play where, who would thrive, would it work, and try and project a little bit what we'd be saying about this team. Difficult to do, but we're going to give it a go. We've got the tactical pad here, and that's where we start because I think the, the this is what you want to know. This is the most fascinating bit about it is what would Arsenal's team look like? You know when you get a new manager and you you're hoping for a new manager bounce, but you're also going, I'm really interested in that first formation. Now, Unai Emery has typically played since leaving Arsenal at Villarreal and at Aston Villa a 4-4-2, or should I say a 4-2-2-2. You can kind of see it here. It's actually the formation that Man City won their first title with when they got Nazari David Silva as kind of wide playmakers, and that's a crucial thing. You don't often play this formation with two out-and-out -out wingers because the wingbacks get forward, but we'll break that down in a sec. At Arsenal, we didn't see a lot of this. We saw it in one game, I remember, when Henrik Mkhitaryan in this position and Meza Ozil in that position on the left and right were basically playing with a Bamiyan and Lacazette up top and I actually think we probably could have had a lot of fun with this formation with Bellerin and Kal Kalazinac and players like that but he didn't really use that much he tended to go with a back three and wing backs getting forward in that way so this is the typical formation got Arsenal in the red and white obviously and what you basically see from Unai Emery's side before I put the players in this 11 what you see let's start with the top you're going to have a focal point there's always a focal point in Unai Emery size we're going to break down strikers that have really done well under Unai Emery now you're going to have a player who runs the channels runs the lines they will do everything but they also get on the end of chances very complete striker role they will often drop into pockets as well and they allow runs for the second striker look at what Musa Diaby's been doing and other players that have played off him he, he tends to get the most out of, especially at Villa, we've seen a lot of that from, like I said, Musa Diaby running off Ollie Watkins or whatever. Now, these wide players here that I mentioned, we know that it can be a Leon Bailey, it can be a Diaby out wide. But we also saw at the start of the season, this area, this position was occupied by Zaniolo. And then you'll have someone like John McGinn playing on the right of the midfield four. But they'll be very, very condensed for two reasons. A, it gives Villa control of this area of the pitch makes them very 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 difficult to play through very difficult to progress through but also these players can come centrally in build up pick up the pockets the alternating between the front two or three and then the wing backs will come forward as that player gets you know comes inside and there might be an overlap crucially though when it comes to the wing backs it tends to be one that goes and the other might just sit in a little bit there they don't go all the way the other they don't go all the way across if you want to know more about this i've broken down Uno emery's tactics you can watch it in a video up here where i basically talked about how if you actually watch the goals they scored against brighton the wing backs are crucial but only ever one at a time now we bring them back a little bit the center backs they you know they've got to be a part of the press as well so they've got to have dynamism that's why the likes of you know Paul torres being good on the ball in build up Consa have done well for villa as well so that's just a sort of basic look at their tactics. We're going to have a look at it in a little bit more detail now, as I discuss the Arsenal team. So let's reveal my Arsenal 11. And here it is. The goalkeeper. I mean, I've gone for Ramsdale, but you can take your pick, right? I, I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that. Let's go into the back four. Now I've got White, Saliba, Gabriel and Zinchenko. But I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here for a second. Let me just go across to my squad. And pull out this guy, Kieran Tierney. Now I'm cheating because I said we were going to do the current Arsenal squad. However, Tierney wouldn't be allowed on loan. He'd be doing what Dini is doing. He'd keep him. No question he'd keep him. But he doesn't have him. So Zinchenko. And I think he'd have to use him as more of an overlapper. Rice and Partey, he would absolutely adore. Partey would be the Kamara on this team. Rice would be getting four a little bit more. But the reality is they probably alternate. That's what their central midfielders do. Now, you're going to probably find these positions interesting. I've gone for Erdegaard and Havertz. Now, Havertz, I think, is actually quite similar to Zaniola, just stylistically, aesthetically, if that makes sense. These two players have to work incredibly hard and they have to be able to operate in central areas. Havertz and Erdegaard work incredibly hard, can pop 
into central areas but also drift wide but another crucial thing here is that sometimes there's all overlaps alternating between the right hand side which we're seeing from Marcel anyway and what you would see at times is Erdegaard float into this space with Bakaya Saka coming out wide I think you'd see that a lot under Unai Emery they might even start games like that with Erdegaard in the 10 and Saka out on the right but they would constantly Saka would be looking for that darting run inside which brings me to the front two Jesus would be just everything for Una Emery. It'd be long balls up to him, it'd be run the channels, it'd be get on the end of chances, it'd be drop in. And then as they drag fullbacks, um, as they drag, sorry, centre backs away, you'd have Bakaya Saka just making runs all the time and getting a lot of goals and assists. And he'd be doing so well in this team. So you look at Diaby's output since he's arrived at Aston Villa, Una Emery would no doubt be getting the best out of Bakaya Saka in that way as well. In terms of the rest of the team, I mean, Ben White would have to overlap as well a lot. But where I think he'd do really well is every time Zinchenko got forward to cover this space here and he's overlapping. I think you'd find there would just be a little bit of a reshuffle like that for Arsenal to ensure that they've got another shield protecting their two centre-backs. And Gabriel Saliba would be dream centre-backs through Naomi, who likes to play with the high line and a really high press. Other players that I've mentioned who would get minutes, like I said, I think Kieran Tierney probably would to a degree. We can drop him in there. Yeah, Jorginho would probably get some minutes. I think another big one, though, or big two, shall I mention, Smith Rowe could easily play in that Havertz position out on the left, working hard but coming inside. And Martinelli, look, you could play him out wide. I think, I think Emery would find a way to get him in because I think he really loves him. But he could easily play off a striker in the way Bakar Saka probably would in my imagination. For what Unai Emery would do with this Arsenal team. Now it's very difficult to uh, to sort of predict what else you'd get from Unai Emery in this Arsenal side. I think some of the things you would get though, perhaps Gabby Jesus firing. And I know that sounds crazy because he has quite literally said himself, goal scoring isn't my strength. Okay, but look at the goal scorers and Emery's main number nine over his last four clubs, PSG, Arsenal, Villarreal and Aston Villa. 98 games and 89 goals for Cavani at PSG under Unai Emery in the two full seasons he played with him. In the one full season, Aubameyang got 31 goals in 51 games, Moreno with 43 and 73 and Watkins is a little asterisk. Why? Because he's obviously not played a full season with him yet. 26 goals in 46 games for Unai Emery. So the striker always eats under Unai Emery. They just... He just knows how to get the best out of his number nine. I think that's the one thing you get. Jesus doing all the selfless stuff, but getting into positions where he can really add to his goal tally. Another thing I think you'd get from this Arsenal team and Unai Emery teams is a pretty immaculate home record. I think with this squad, Arsenal would be very, very difficult to beat at home. They'd be energised because Unai Emery, he, he just drives that. Even in his short time at Arsenal, you did see a very energised Emirates Stadium. I remember games like Liverpool at home, we drew 1-1. Tottenham, we beat 4-2. He does get that out of you. And you can see his home record in the league for specific seasons. Arsenal in the 18-19 season, a 74 win, 74 win percentage, a loss percentage, just 11% of games. I think that was only two in the league or three in the league. Villarreal, 53% percent of games won but only 16 percent defeats this season Aston Villa haven't lost a single game they've won every single one at home Arsenal were in fact the last team to beat them at Villa Park there would be though questions about their defending that would probably still be a thing now we all remember the famous Arsenal shipping 30 shots at Watford look I don't think it'd be like that but I still think Arsenal would have a vulnerability because I'm not sure Emery totally knows how to coach the press and ensure that there's nothing coming the other way. They might be in the end of a few batterings. Villa have been brilliant, but they've lost 5-1 at Newcastle, 3-0 at Villa. Uh, sorry, at Liverpool, that can happen. And you look at some of Villa's defensive number this season, they have conceded 20 goals. They rank 8th for XG against, and they've only had three clean sheets in 15 Premier League games. So that tells you that there might be something there in terms of Arsenal might look great going forward, immaculate home record, but away from home and when it comes to conceding goals, there might be a slight problem. So, Tony Adams predicted that perhaps Unai Emery would have got Arsenal over the line had he been in charge last season. Do I think Unai Emery could win the league with this current Arsenal squad playing these kind of tactics? I don't. If you want to know why, watch this video up here where I break it all down and explain why Unai Emery, despite all his brilliance, is not the third best manager in the league. And I just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this, including my Football First podcast, which drops every Monday to Friday at 6am. And I know it's annoying, I am really sorry to have to ask, but if you want to show support to the channel, hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know. Thanks again.